on Zebra book, which is one of the great topics in all of endocrinology these days, is spotted hyenas. Hyenas are weird animals. Hyenas have a totally different worldview, thanks to a bizarre neurobiology. Among spotted hyenas, females are dominant to males. Females are bigger than males. Females are more muscular than males. Females are more aggressive than males. Females have higher testosterone levels than males do. And you look at the private parts of a hyena and you cannot tell who is which sex. Female hyenas have androgenization. They have enlarged clitorises the size of penises in males. They have something that looks like a scrotum, which turns out to be compacted fat cells that form these scrotum-like things. And they look just like males. And over the years, as part of my field work, I spent some years sharing camp with a guy who is without question the world's expert on like hyena clitorises. And this guy would bring in some anesthetized hyena, and he would have to look at this thing for 15 minutes with like calipers and like night viewing goggles and stuff to finally decide its gender, hyenas are this very interesting case of a sex reversal androgenization. Females produce very high levels of androgens in their ovaries, and you've got this sex reversal system with the following thing. Unlike in most species of carnivores, what happens in lions, for example, males eat first, followed by females, followed by cubs. Most lion cubs starve to death in the first year of life. Among hyenas, because of the sex reversal system, cubs eat first, followed by females, followed by males. The kids survive that day, that way, a wonderful sort of mutation in terms of doing that. And what you get as a result is unavoidably you get a masculinization of the genitalia in the females. And what you wind up doing is it winds up having a different signaling purpose. In most species, what happens among male primates, for example, when males are trying to, expo uh, to display their dominance, they get an erection and wave their penis around and look how tough and scary I am. And that's due to a certain wiring of the autonomic nervous system. In hyenas, it works just the opposite. Males get erections when they're terrified. Because you think about it, males are lower ranking than females. Females spend all their time ripping off the males who have just hunted something. Females terrorize the males. So you're some male sitting there, and here comes this terrifying female. What do you do? You say, don't hurt me, I'm one of these males, I'm not threatening, or whatever, that in males, what you get is you get erections when you are under stress as a subordination gesture. What do females do? Low-ranking females get clitoral erections when they are being threatened by high-ranking females, a total sex reversal system. So hyenas can either wind up telling you, you know, we are breaking out of these stereotypical role gender expectations and that you can have a species where females are dominant and more muscular and more aggressive. But at the end of the day, they are like that because they are even more hormonally like males than males are. Final amazing thing about them. And this is a story of this friend of mine, this guy who's been studying hyenas for 30 years. And he's like incredibly knowledgeable about hyenas. And this was something that really makes you stunned at what sort of people there are in the government thinking about things here. So one day, he's from Berkeley. One day, he's in his office there. And he gets a call. And it's from some army colonel. And the army colonel says, oh, we're having a conference, and we're having a whole bunch of carnivore biologists coming to it. We're going to have a great time. We're having this conference of carnivore biologists, and we want you to come to it. My friend says, um, you're from the army? What are you talking about? Do you know what I study? And the guy proceeds to show him that he knows exactly what he studies and what his social security number is and how many like cavities he has and how much unpaid taxes. And he says, so all of America's carnivore biologists are coming to this meeting. So come to this meeting. We're going to have a great time. It's going to be at this hotel in Arizona. Come, you're going to have a terrific time. So my friend decides, why not, and goes to this and winds up in this place. And here's this conference with like all of America's carnivore biologists and these three army colonels sitting in the back with these sunglasses on. So all the carnivore biologists are fairly confused about what's up here. And, but nonetheless, they sort of settle down. And they start doing their scientist thing, giving talks to each other. And the, the, the army guys are sitting in the back there. And like there's two days worth of them just sitting in the back saying nothing. And finally, all the carnivore biologists get all upset and say, what are you guys doing here? What are we doing at a conference paid for by the US military? And they finally say, OK, OK, you're such great guys. We're going to tell you actually what we're really up to here. You know, we're from the military. We're actually from the tank corps. 
And what we have is we're, de we're designing these new walker things. You remember in the Star Wars movie in the second one, they had those machines that looked like the elephants that could walk and all of that. Well, we want to build them. In order to build them, we have to know how animals locomote, locomate, how they move, how they walk. And you guys study carnivores, and carnivores run around a lot, so we want to hear you guys tell us like, how your animals move when they're doing things like hunting. And America's carnivore biologists listen to this and say, this makes no sense at all. You want to learn about locomotion in animals, you get like bioengineering people, you, get, you don't get like zoologists, what's going on here? So all of America's carnivore biologists proceed to go and sort of like huddle there and decide they're going on strike. They are not going to give any more talks until people explain what's up. They like eat all the donuts that are left, go to the bar, start drinking, and they're going to refuse to have anything to do until these colonels explain what's actually going on. So the colonels obviously like need to get on the phone to Washington and call up and sort of get permission. They come back and say, okay, okay, because you guys are all our best friends, we're gonna tell you what's really going on. We're really not making Star Wars walkers. Here's what we're really doing. We're from the tank war, the tank corps, and we've built this new tank recently, and it was what was called the Sherman tank. And apparently for all of history, what you do if you're in the tank corps is what you do is you just bash the hell out of everything and drive your tank to the highest spot around and just shoot anything that moves. But the Sherman tank apparently was like the greatest tank that had ever been built. It could drive like 60 miles an hour hour and it could fire missiles when it was bouncing upside down out of ditches and gyroscopic this and that and it was the greatest most mobile tank and they were having a problem which was they would put in their tank cores in there and what they would do was bash the hell out of everything and drive to the highest spot around and just shoot anything that moved. So the US Army Corps decided that they needed to teach their troops, their army, their tank cores how to hunt like carnivores. And thus, here they invited all of America's carnivore biologists to come in and teach us how to teach our tank crews how to hunt like carnivores. How do you figure out who's going to cut corners on the prey? How do you communicate if you're out of sight with each other? What do your hyenas do? What do your wolves do? What do your coyotes do? So at that point, like all of America's carnivores biologists say, whoa, we are way in over our heads here. So like a third of them instantly like, march out shouting about Ho 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 Chi Minh or whatever, given the age group of most America's carnivore biologists. And the rest of them huddled there, and they come back and they say, well, these are very difficult questions to answer. So the military guys say, well, yes, we will give you money for your research. So at that point, all of America's carnivore biologists decide they're now best friends with these Army Corps guys. They go through the rest of the conference telling them all about the hunting techniques of their animals, and with careful instructions as to who to submit grants to, they all immediately go back to the universities, write grants, my friend writes this grant for like four Sherman tanks and night viewing goggles for an, like a Death Star and flamethrowers for his hyenas and all of that. All of America's carnivore biologists send in their grant proposals to this P.O. box at the Pentagon and nobody has ever heard from any of these army guys again. And this was about 15 years ago, and to this day, none of them know what were these people really trying to find out from us at this meeting. This was this totally bizarre incident showing that somebody or other in the tank corps is sitting around 